Hello everyone and welcome to the Geomology Presents, number ten of our ongoing Mine and Amy. Amy's joining me as a mega critic today. Hello. And our ongoing review of the top ten westerns according to IMBD. This is not our list. This is the list from IMBD of the top 10 Westerns. People have told us personally or told us verbally, well, what about this movie and that movie and this movie? Well, we will probably have a segment on honorable mentions, probably three or four honorable mentions. After we complete the series, we have four more to go. So bear with us, send in your suggestions. Uh, that would be great. We do have a few already. Some um, obvious ones maybe are Tombstone, Stagecoach, uh, so, uh, yeah, I've, I've reviewed other movies with other people. And if you um, give like long writers, well, I'll, or Vera Cruz, well, I'll direct you to the podcast that have done those uh, reviews recently. So anyway, we do have some call-ins, Amy. I love call-ins. So let's do, start with the call-ins and then jump into Once Upon a Time in the West the 1968 epic spaghetti western, again directed by Sergio Leone, who has three in this list. Uh, so we'll get more details on that after the call-ins. Here's the first call-in. Great movie. I want to say that this is one, I think, for a few dollars more, was the first Western I think I really ever saw. Never really watched any of Roy Rogers stuff or any of that, that ill. Um, and if it was on, I probably didn't pay attention to it, but I'm pretty certain that I had watched this you know, for a few dollars more. Uh, with my, own, my father, my uncle, um, it seemed good and bad ugly many times, so uh, a lot of good memories there. Uh, picking back up where I left off one of the last time, this is this whole set of Spaghetti Westerns, the trilogy. The score is so integral to it that without it, it would not have the same, it would not have the same effect, the same mood. This is one of the times that that music helps set the tone and it even helps set the expectation of what you know to be coming up. Great stuff. Can't wait for the next review. All right. Thank you, Evil Jeff. Mm-hmm. Do you agree with them? I think so. I mean, we've had this discussion in the past with several of our callers about what role music really does play. And I know for me personally, music makes a huge difference. I've tried watching the, shall we say, silent films, and they're always playing a piano or music to keep you enraptured, and they try and make the music go with the scene, even though it normally doesn't. But it does make a difference to me. Yeah, definitely. I think um, music for sure is integral, the the classic work of uh, the music, of course, is by Ennio Morricone, and his classic work, especially for Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, is top notch. Um, yeah, we. Oh, the other one that is an honorable mention is the first one in the trilogy that Evil Jeff mentioned, A Fistful of Dollars. So we probably will review that one too, might as well, since we have the other two. And this is not really part of the trilogy, Once Upon a Time in the West. Um, but it does have the same sort of haunting score by Ennio Morricone. So I think at least the music, whether you like it or not, we'll get to that a little later um, because there's a repetitive part. See, I guess that's the thing. And once upon a time, I'm not sorry, in the good and the bad and the ugly, the music, while it has a common theme, doesn't get repetitive to me. Mm-mm. So it doesn't he, have that annoying bit like the watch did. <laughs> Yeah, like the watch did in uh, uh, for a few dollars more, right? So, mm-hmm. and uh, there's a, a similar bit in this next movie that we're coming up. You might know it already uh, if you've seen the movie. But like I would, the way that uh, I think uh, Ennio Morricone was on top of his game in this in Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, and he changes the you know ah right that sort of haunting 
howl that comes again and again in the movie, he changes it just depending on what's going on and who can forget, you know, the uh, uh, the ecstasy of gold when they get to, you know, to the cemetery. I, that's kind of my favorite piece. And and especially I know and I know Amy likes it because Metallica uses it in their intro. So. <laughs> Um, to their concert sometimes so so yeah it's it's pretty cool so so yeah so thank you so much evil jeff anything anything else amy i'm glad that he's watches it's kind of funny i don't know uh, I, I don't think we were reviewing any of those the kind of roy rogers ones we did have a john wayne one maybe we'll look at true grit either the one with jeff bridges or the one with john wayne um that's another classic great one there's another really good john wayne movie at, at, off the top of my head i think it was his last movie that he did um that we might review as well. So, um, so yeah. Um, but some of those older ones, I, I don't know. I didn't, I've never seen them. <laughs> Honestly, I've never seen them. I've Probably never seen the singing cowboy. <laughs> well, I've never seen the singing cowboy stuff. Right. So, um, except for that one movie that was kind of a weird parody, uh, to live and die in the wet. No, I, thought, I don't know. Anyway. Oh, maybe the that... fighting Texan. That no, one I don't know. John Wayne in it. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway. All right, so our other call is uh, about four minutes. So you know, hang in there, bear with us as I and hopefully my hand, my arm doesn't you know give out as I hold the phone near the microphone. Um, but this next call is from M. W. Lewis of the Worlds of M. W. Lewis. He does a lot of uh, kind of old school game type review, especially the classic A D and D and the like. So go check out his podcast and Evil Jeff also has a podcast, Minions and Musings. Both of those will be in the show notes. All right, here's M.W. Hey, Carl, this is M.W. Lewis calling in. I just want to say that I have been listening uh, to your Western reviews with Amy, your lovely wife, and I want to say that I'm really enjoying uh, your reviews of these movies. I've, I've seen all these movies, uh, and I... Uh, don't always agree with your assessments even but uh, that doesn't mean they're not enjoyable because they are thoroughly enjoyable what what i'm realizing especially in the post pandemic world this post apocalyptic world we live in uh is a lot of us are consuming media in the confines of our own homes in front of our enormous televisions uh and for someone like me I, it could be alone i might just be alone you know my boys have moved out uh, I don't live with anybody. So if I watch a movie, I'm, I'm just by myself. And and the reaction to the movie uh, occurs uh, uh, only in my mind. One of the one of the many things swirling around my mind are my thoughts about the media I consume. And what's nice, and I, I realized this when I went and saw The Warriors at the AFI Theater a few weeks ago, um, even though I had just watched it in review, on, on Pluto TV, or AMC or something like that, and I've reviewed it with Jason Connerly on Nerds RPG Variety Cast, uh, I realized that in the theater with about 30 people in there, I, I reacted to the movie, I experienced the movie differently, hearing the way they reacted to certain aspects of the movie. So that was uh, that was eye-opening. And, and so I think listening to your podcast about these Westerns, which of course you're never really going to see in the movie theater, well, I might because I have AFI right next door and, and they do run these movies periodically. But, you know, the, these old movies don't get a large crowd. The, you know, I had a I had a, a, a pushback on Jason Connolly a little bit when he thought my picture of the crowd at Warriors didn't look so good. For for a 10, 10 o'clock showing of a movie that came out 40 years ago, almost 50 years ago, that was, that was a good crowd. You got to trust me. That was a good crowd. I've gone to some of these old movies from the 50s, 60s, real classics too, where there's maybe four people in the theater besides me. So, you know, uh, you just don't get a lot of people at these movies, but to hear you two reacting to these movies is just great because it's giving me a new experience of the movie. And uh, it, it just makes me even happier that I went out and saw Oppenheimer last summer and Dune just like last weekend, because I, I think we're... I think we're, as a society, we're tending to become insular and isolated uh, in our comforts of our mansions. Everyone lives in a mansion now with gigantic televisions and amazing sound systems, and uh, you can stream anything. And you know, we don't even go out 
vote together anymore. So the shared experience of life is starting to dry up a little bit. And uh, so um, I appreciate it. I hope you keep doing these. Uh, I, I hope you keep sharing your experience watching these films. And I like the two different perspectives you're providing, yours and Amy. And I think it's great, too, because you guys do react differently to certain aspects of these films. And and that's good. That's good, because art uh, art should be a shared experience. And uh, we should understand how people respond to the art we, we like. So keep it going. I look forward to your your next one. I can't remember what's next. I think I have one more. I, I, I kind of caught on to these late. I think I still have to listen to one more of yours. I'm going backwards. So I think I have to do the first one and I uh, just keep it going. Good job. All right. That was M.W. Lewis of the Worlds of M.W. Any comments, Amy? Well, thank you very much, M.W. <laughs> I appreciate it. And I do agree. I do. I do feel like when we go to the movie theaters, it's only opening night or the opening weekend that people are really going because so many times we can just turn the TV on. But what's totally missing for me, if I'm at home watching a movie, is that giant bucket of popcorn dripping in the butter. Yeah, that's true. I think we might have to do a, I know there's multiple shows on popcorn and the origin of it, but we might have to do our own show on it, I think. We almost have to, yeah, because I, it, was, it actually did surprise me. Yeah, it did. It did. Setting that aside, I do agree with him that we are living in a society where it's easier to stay at home with our big screen TVs. And when we have to go to the bathroom, we just pause. Or if we want to pop more popcorn in a microwave, we hit pause. And since 2020, we've learned as a society that we can be sort of like hermits. Right. Well, I, you know, and it was good. I'm so glad that we went to go see Casablanca live on, on the theater it definitely is a different experience than watching it on TV. And it oh, was so absolutely. Because cool. so at the I end, definitely... people were cheering and clapping. and Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a big crowd, but hey, there was like 10 to 15 people. It was really nice. So, but all, you know, you have... all three other showings were actually sold out. Right, right. So we saw like a matinee, but uh, but yeah, I think that's really cool. And I, and I really am going to look around. I'm, I'm sure this area has like those special viewings um i know alma draft house does special viewings of older movies mm -hmm. now and again so we got to definitely look around uh, for that so we can um we can go see some of these classics it'd be, be great i mean hopefully they would have an intermission like if they had good the bad and the ugly or or this movie or another longer movie uh but um but yeah i think i think that's what they might have to do anyway I think speaking of oppenheimer and dune bring back the intermission um I, yes I think. please right but uh uh, both of the I haven't seen Oppenheimer. We haven't seen Oppenheimer yet, which is crazy. Not uh, I yet. Guess, but we were, I guess, Harmon's more last year. We did see Dune though, which I really enjoyed. So, uh, so yeah, uh, you can find reviews on that on those like all over. Um, anyway, I guess on with the show. Any other comments for MW? Again, thank you for that call in MW. It is really cool to. Yeah. And that's no, why I mean, we love I... your comments, right? We love your comments, uh, because we get to learn a different perspective or you got a different thing out of the movie um i love doing these shows i know uh jason connelly has done a lot of shows this year he's doing the movies of walter hill like about one a month and that's pretty neat to get with somebody and to discuss these movies so uh and that's who you mentioned mw as uh, jason connelly will put that link in the show notes too absolutely and i like the fact that he pointed out we don't always agree on these movies no, we probably won't agree so much on this one. I don't know. You had a stronger reaction to it than I did. Uh, speaking of strong reactions, there are definitely some cringe scenes I felt in this movie. We'll discuss them, I think. But saying that, this is a warning. Um, uh, there are, and much like in other Sergio Leone films, it's definitely violent. There's definitely some uh, hintings and tension of sexual assault. So um, watch or beware. It's, it's another one that as a mom, I would not let my child watch. Right, right. So that that up front. All right. So onward, Once Upon a Time in the West, or Si Era Una Volta Il West, which is Once Upon a Time, There Was the West, in it, my awful Italian. If it were in <laughs> Spanish, I'd do it great. But I, you know, my stepfather's Italian, but uh, I he hasn't taught me Italian yet. Anyway, Once Upon a Time in the West is a 1968 epic spaghetti western 
epic, mm -hmm. I guess, a spaghetti western, denoting it from a regular spaghetti western. Maybe it's a time thing. It was also directed by Sergio Leone, who co-wrote it with Sergio Donati. And it's based on a story, a uh, screenplay by Dario Argento, Bernardo Bertolucci, as well as Leone. I, yeah, I, it clocks in here at 166 minutes, so almost three hours. It um, felt a lot longer than that. Yeah, 14 minutes shy of three hours. Man, it was, yeah, it was, it was long. And I, I definitely, that's my initial impression of it. There's some really cool scenes in the movie, but I definitely feel like there was a lot of like filler and, you know, moving around I, I don't know I personally felt like if you took out all the superfluous stuff we could have had this down to maybe an hour I don't know if, I don't know about an hour but definitely an hour and a half I think you could have taken out there's uh, a lot I would take out yeah I mean because I, like I said there's some really good scenes but then there's a lot of stuff I don't get that goes in between and um or extra tension that doesn't need to be there. This that even the tent scenes could be cut. I I would dare to say that out of all the movies that we're reviewing off of this list, this one I give a very solid two out of ten. Wow, you really I didn't like it. See, did you not like, like this movie. I felt like it was overacted in many parts, underacted in others. I felt like there were scenes that were put in there just to get an emotion out of me that had absolutely nothing to do with the movie. So I'd be interested to see what the script or the original basis was, because I bet you it was probably a really good, good thing. And they added a lot. And I think people just went to go see it here because it was Sergio Lamont, just kind of like. People that drink beer go chasing whales, but the whales really don't taste good, but they're getting it just because somebody said it was good. So I don't know. I, I, I'm i somewhat sad because there were some some good scenes in here. Yeah. I, I missed our, our one buddy from, you know, all yeah, of Yeah, we'll get the, to the cast. We'll get to the cast. Yeah, but I don't he's think not he's in, in there, the one that died in every movie. He wasn't yeah. in this movie to die. Right. Maybe but we have some familiar faces, which is kind of neat. Um, Charles so, Bronson. Yeah, well, we'll get to that. Also, mm -hmm. Amy, Amy jumping ahead to the cast already. I anyway, am. so speaking of its reception, it did cost a lot to make. It cost $5 million to make, and it only made $5.3 million in the U.S., though made $40 million worldwide. So I guess it's an eight, almost an eight times return. So I guess it was a sort of blockbuster, although maybe in the U.S. they're like tired. They're like, come on, it's so long. Uh, no intermission. And I bet they no. didn't have an intermission. Yeah. So the, so let's jump to the cast. I, I am surprised right off the bat because on two posters, I see that um, Claudia Cardinale, um, as, who plays Jill McBain, a widow, who kind of is maybe the main focus of Once Upon a Time in the West. She just kind of arrives there uh, in the midst of a tragedy. She gets top billing, uh, which is interesting, I, I think. Um, and I think it's a good tale that does revolve around her. Um, there's also Henry Fonda, who play who surprisingly plays a bad guy. I, he, I guess, he played a villain. You had a little anecdote about that, I think, right? About um, Henry Fonda. Somewhat, wanting... but I, I, I can give that when we, when we do some of the trivia. Yeah. Okay. Unless uh, you want me to do it now. No, no. We have a Jason Robards as Manuel Cheyenne Gutierrez, Charles Bronson as Harmonica, who's the main protagonist. I would say. Uh, Gabrielle Ferzetti as Mr. Morton. Um, we have a, a lot of like um, sort of uh, side players or not side sub, sub characters as well. Most importantly, I would say are the the gunman in the first scene, uh, one who you probably recognize, uh, Woody Strode, mm -hmm. who was uh, who was John Wayne's bat John Wayne's character's Batman in uh, Man Who Shot Liberty Valance, right? So that's the first gunman. Um, and Jack Elam is also one of the gunmen. So you re you'll recognize Jack Elam from a lot of stuff. So uh, the other people I don't, you probably seen around, but I don't, I don't see any notables. At least I'm not as versed in Italian cinema uh, as other people are, but maybe some of you might know and comment on that. So, so that's the cast. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if I was a, a big fan of Charles Bronson in this movie, truth be told. Henry Fonda, I thought was great as a villain. <laughs> um, really. 
And but Kathy, I think that I think the best part of the movie for Henry Fonda was the opening scene, which really didn't have anything to do. That's part of it that I would have cut out. Oh, uh, you mean the opening gunman scene? He's not even in there. He just mentioned. No, um, when they oh, oh the second the second when they're waiting scene. for the train and then they pull yeah. up and I'm just like, come on. You lock the guy in a cabinet. Why? Why did we need to spend 15 minutes to lock a guy in a cabinet for us to never do anything? It just, I don't know. Yeah. Well, Henry Fonda is not even in that scene, but he is, his people are. And that's how the, the, the movie starts. This train arrives and just, I mean, I like the, the cinematography. I love the weird boardwalk or, or how the train stop was laid out with this like, kind of warped, uh, there's some great visuals in this movie. Uh, this like warp wood is there with the train stop. And there's these three gunmen waiting for somebody. And the person they're waiting for, for is Charles Bronson's character, Harmonica. Like we said, Woody Strode and Jack Elam are among these gunmen. And that's where we skip that, that honestly annoying Harmonica. God, that drove me nuts. And it wasn't even a good Harmonica sound. It didn't even sound like someone playing a Harmonica. It was terrible. And not to mention in that opening scene, didn't we spend at least five minutes watching this guy trap a fly in a bottle? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of like superfluous scenes and close ups and things that Sergio Leone likes to do. But I just I don't know. Uh, it could have gone through a through a good editing, truth be told, right? Because it's a lot of repetitive stuff. Sure, you see the guy try to trap the fly or do something with the fly, but we don't need to spend three minute three four minutes on it. But it down. had nothing to do with the movie. Right, they could right. have just cut to them shooting at Charles Bronson's character, and we could have right. cut the first 30 to 35 minutes off of this film. Yeah, similarly, the second opening scene, we haven't even met, we went, we only met Harmonica, Charles Bronson's character. We hear about Frank, uh, Henry Fonda's character. Uh, but then, you know, in the second scene, we haven't even met the principal. We haven't even met, met Jill yet. Or, or uh, Cheyenne, uh, Jason Robard's character. And um, yeah, and these these people, they, they killed this family. And that scene, I think, dragged on. And here, why, here we actually meet Frank as a bad guy. They killed this uh, man and his three children at their Sweetwater Ranch. Um, oh, yes. that's, While you're that... doing that, I'll give you that fun little trivia. Okay. Did Go you ahead. realize that um, the whole reason why Sergio Leone wanted Henry Fonda to play Frank is that he wanted, when they were panning down, or I guess it's more like panning up, he wanted the audience to be shocked to see Henry Fonda as a bad guy because he had only played good guys up to that point in time. Right, right. And I I think, I mean, Frank to me is probably my, one of, he's a great anti-hero. He's a great villain, I guess, not really anti-hero. He's a great villain, uh, I guess, more... Harmonica is an anti-hero because he's not a nice person. But I mean, so are so are the Clint Eastwood, you know, man with no names, right? They're kind of anti-heroes, they're kind of mercenary, mean, not really mm -hmm. good, even though he's called good and the good, the bad, and the ugly. Uh, but you know, uh, harmonica is like that type of character. And I feel like they tried to get did they try to get Clint Eastwood for this one? I think Clint Eastwood and Sergio Lom were not exactly seeing eye to eye at this point in time. Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, um, the style, it's a much slower pace and somber theme. Um, honestly, I think that's what really kind of makes it drag, unfortunately. But um, well, that and it was very disjointed. Yeah, I mean, there's like I mean, scene, we're waiting, we're waiting scene. on a train, and then we cut to a guy out with his child shooting birds so we can go up and kill his family, and then we go back to another train, and it's just so disjointed and then they spent so much time talking about mrs mcbain being basically a prostitute from new orleans yeah yeah and that went nowhere and i'm just oh goodness yeah so so uh, frank is the bad guy henry fonda and mm -hmm. he is uh he is working for a man a tycoon railroad tycoon named morton who wants to get the land owned by the McBain family. It's an interesting railroad town plot, and you get a lot of money, apparently, um, if you you get the town that the railroad goes through, and you only have a certain amount of time, which kind of comes... Had, and it had the well, so it yeah. was the only one that had water around. Right, right. Yeah, and, it's, it... and, it's, and then they try to frame 
they try to frame uh, this outlaw Cheyenne, played by Jason Robards, who I guess has just gotten out of, of jail. Um, and then Harmonica wants to go after this guy because he sees because there's this thing about the dusters. There's a lot of like little, you know, uh, things uh, to misdirect and and then but then at, you know early on Harmonica finds Cheyenne. He says, "I'm not the dude. I want to help you get these dudes." Um, right. So, yeah, I think um, anyway. So anyway, so what happens? Jill shows up. Uh, they 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 make this big deal that she's a prostitute who married McBain, so she, but she's a sole heir. Um, and then um, it would be subject to a reverter and they would forfeit Sweetwater. So then Morton would get it and be able to run the town type of thing. So he tries to make a deal with Jill, but then Frank wants to land for himself. And again, and we learned that Mr. Morton is also like a, he's suffering from a, a something called spinal tuberculosis. So he's dying or he's, you know, can't walk very well. Um, yeah. So again, anyway. another side plot that went nowhere. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, um, and then we learned that Mrs. McBain, you know, since she was the prostitute was willing to sleep with Frank to try and get him to leave her alone or give her money. Yeah. That, it just, I didn't that like that scene either. And then the scene where, um, there's a scene earlier when, um, they try to kill, they try to kill Jill. Frank and his men try to kill Jill and Harmonica happens to be there. Um, also, the the first scene where they meet Cheyenne, where there seems like a lot of tension, like all these, like Sergio Leone loves these close ups with wolfish looking men eyeing the girl, you know. <laughs> and there's this really odd, I would say, assault like scene um, with uh, harmonic between Harmonica and Jill. Um, you know, oh, I don't know. I don't know what the point of that. Leaves off. Yeah, I don't know what the point of that was really. I mean, it's. It could it have been odd. cut. Yeah, it was odd. Just I mean, like the the five to ten minute scene about how he somebody wanted her to make coffee and she makes really good coffee. Yeah. And then he leaves. I'm right. like, we just went through that for nothing. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I just really did not like this movie. Yeah, I mean, all this stuff was really it kind of got in the way of of otherwise very interesting plot. Um, so eventually, Harmonica and Cheyenne, fig or Harmonica and Cheyenne figure out that it's Frank, uh, Frank and Mister Morton doing this kind of these shenanigans, mm -hmm. um, and then um, and then Harmonica gets captured, uh, beat up, uh, but then you know, Harmonica is very vague. Oh, I know you. You know me. He replies with the names of people that Frank has killed in the past. Um, I guess he's. Uh, I mean, that becomes kind of more interesting later. But again, you know, it could have been. Well, it's not until the end of the movie that we find out why Charles Bronson is called Harmonica, and it's because yeah, yeah. Frank shot his father. Right. No, and, not killed his brother and made him watch. And, and then, so yeah, yeah, it, it's again that was not necessary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just could have cut to it; it would have been more interesting instead of this. I feel like that again was that was drawn out. Um, it was a cool scene how he how he. You know, he he Cheyenne's men rescued them. Um, there was, I mean, they collaborate to help Jill save Jill still Sweetwater because they how they find all of the stockpile of equipment that Mister McBain had had. I do like that name McBain though. It's kind of a cool name. Um, so Interesting. I don't know. I mean, so anyway. they they kept going, and then Frank had the train with that no. other guy, and no, well, that was we did that already. No, because they had to go get the money to bring it back when she was auctioning the property off. Right, but then what happens is that the plot that Harmonica and Cheyenne have is to, because Cheyenne's a wanted fugitive, and that's going to be the price. Um, so he is able to, he was able to, you know, use use uh, Cheyenne as collateral basically to to help. Jill get the property or you know keep the property so it's not like sold because like Frank's men are in the auction and they try to mess with the people and intimidate them so the price stays low and and Morton and Frank can get them but the meanwhile Morton's tired of Frank and he's bribed Frank's own men to kill him but then Harmonica saves him 
right after this. And uh, and I guess because because again because this harmonica has this vendetta against Frank that we're learning. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then I, unfortunately, see that's the crazy thing. So we have all this superfluous stuff, but then what they could have shown and we really miss because it happens off off um it happens like off camera is like Cheyenne when he escapes custody, he and his gang engage Frank's remaining men on Morton's train, but we never see it. No, right. they just all of a sudden have the the gold. They're all dead. They're all dead. Morton's dying. Um, right. And I would have uh, rather have seen that fight than people building. Yeah. You spent a lot of time building things and it just mm. Yeah. And then eventually though, Frank when Frank gets back over there, he goes to the aftermath, then he goes back to Sweetwater, and then that's where he and Harmonica have the very Sergio Leone esque standoff. Plays the harmonica, the harmonica keeps going. They stare at each other, blah blah blah. Uh, they engage in a th showdown through a flashback. You see that Frank once hanged Harmonica's older brother, and uh, to support him on his shoulder, right? So, uh, and then of course the boy collapses under the weight. The the boy collapses under the under the weight, and uh, you know his brother is hanged, and then Harmonica they draw. And of course, harmonica wins. And I don't know. Are you hearing a, a bing? I apologize for that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on. Um, something wants an update, but I'm not allowing it. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so harmonica beats Frank to the draw, and then as he lies dying, you know, Frank asks him his identity, and then and then uh, he puts a harmonica in his mouth, and then Frank remembers apparently, and then dies. So yeah. So. Um, and then, and then, uh, unfortunately, Cheyenne has been shot, and he dies as well. He, got, I guess, he got shot off camera in the battle that we, in the fight we didn't see. Oh well. Yes. And then Jill stays, uh, stays, uh, I guess, becomes the owner, rich lady of the town, and Harmonica takes off because that's what they do. You but know, Harmonica that. went back, and I to to sit with Cheyenne till he died. I thought. Yeah. 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 He did. That was kind of cool. That was a good. That was a good mini bromance. I thought uh, between Cheyenne and and uh, Harmonica. I thought Jason mm -hmm. Robards did a great job, uh, even though you know, well, not a, he's not, he's not the ethnicity of. I don't think so. Oh, mm, I don't know. I think Robards. It might be Greek, but anyway, or something. I don't think he's uh, Hispanic. In any case. Um, Right. No, so he, then they... he was born in Chicago, Illinois. Oh, okay. And he's yeah. Swedish, English, Welsh, German, and Irish. Well, there you go. He's from the, the Hispanic Irish group, I think. <laughs> in any case, um, that aside, I think you, I like I like Robart's character in that movie. And I think it's a good relationship between Harmonica and Cheyenne. And of course, Jill asks Harmonica to come back. And he's like, eh, someday. You know. But that's what these men with no name do, right? Yeah, I Jill... would ask him to stay if that horrible harmonica sound was always around. Yeah, maybe that's it. Oh, yeah. Well, no, he no, he left the harmonica there for her in the mouth of Frank. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want that. Yeah, I don't know. I Yeah, so, you know, I, I say, like I said, there were some good scenes that we've highlighted here, I think. But um, overall, it's just, it dragged. It was long. That's my I, opinion. I apologize to our viewers that absolutely love this movie, but I feel as though it shouldn't have been on this list at all. Yeah, I mean, if you guys can can suggest and sell us on this movie, again, we have some, I mean, I think the opening scene is good. I mean, you, you got to hit, see what, why, you know, it's, it's probably, I mean, not that I, I don't like the killing of the children thing, but uh, yeah. I mean, right. So Frank even kills a little boy, right? So Henry Fonda is like really a bad guy, right? Um, but uh, you know, they that was just so long. Um, it dragged, right? I guess I want to increase the tension. Um, I think it, it, it moves along, but there's some superfluous stuff that we can get rid of. Um, the the fight, the the fight we never saw would have been nice to see. Uh, so, I don't know personally. I think you could probably do an entire rewrite on this. Yeah. And cut it down to what ninety minutes and yeah, be done with minutes. it. I think so. It would have cost you less money to make it. 
And right. maybe you would have actually won some awards. It's not that he had bad cast members, but mm -hmm. man, he's just banking on his name on that one. And it, it's a definite never watch again for me. Yeah. I mean, in Italy, it was 175 minutes. Why does he hate Italy? He's always extending <laughs> the video. Apparently it, it featured a yellow tint filter and several scenes were augmented. Wow. Okay. Maybe they got to watch the scene that got cut that we wanted to see where Cheyenne Oh, maybe, got yeah. Shot. That might be, I, I don't know. Does anyone know about that? Maybe That would be interesting to see. I just fast forward to there, I guess. Um, anyway. I don't know. Need, needless to say, mm -hmm. I wouldn't play this game as an RPG. Yeah, well. It, it was not fun to watch as a movie, so I would probably bow out. Yeah, unless you told us we were playing like a... A, a funny thing or or a spoof on it you didn't like jill mcbain's character amy you wouldn't be the 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 widow who comes to claim and recruit people to fight the widow prostitute that was sleeping all over the place with people no not exactly yeah. although i do make good coffee yeah i mean she only slept with one dude in the movie Two. who's the other one she said that she slept with her husband before he came oh right back. right yeah okay yeah but that was off camera only on camera did. everything happened off camera yeah <laughs> so yeah i mean uh, people like it it has a good critical response um although people didn't like uh didn't they said that cardinals although it was a good casting choice she her her um her performance was uh too pa uh too passive and maybe that's the director. Usually she's pretty, you know, more forceful. That's a convoluted plot again, right? Um, but some of the people who make, like George Lucas, Scorsese, Tarantino, they kind of always cite Once Upon a Time in the West as an influence. Maybe an influence. Maybe they've done it better. And again, like it, it's gotten, you know, really good. It was good on, um, on IMDb and Rotten Tomatoes, so... So we're so we're in the minority that Amy gives it a two and I give it about a six, six point five. Oh. So yeah. Well, I, I, I thought I, mean, I was being generous with the two. Yeah, I think um it'd be it'd be fun. I mean, I you could you could do Savage Worlds because it does have sort of the dual mechanic, I think. Um Boot Hill, of course, works. Um there's I do the the whole the whole land thing as a as a side quest might be interesting to do maybe maybe so there's like um sepia... it would be a better movie if maybe they did a call of cthulhu th scene and had a monster come out of the well maybe i don't know i i think that um that there is this uh one game cepheus deluxe that has sort of a i think it has like a western hack we can play through a western and since it's a traveler based it probably has rules for more for domain play so you could have the subplot of Sweetwater and have a mini game in the background too. So I, I think uh, those are potential choices, but definitely, um, well, probably like a uh, you could do it as a one shot, and the one shot session would be about as long as the movie, right? <laughs> so <laughs> the three to or four less because you can cut out all the superfluous stuff. Yeah, yeah. You could play it so, at a con game. Forty five minutes, you're over and done with. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. All right. I don't know if there's any like major film references for it either. I know there's a Once Upon a Time in America. I, I don't think, but that's not. Um, who did once? Did he? I don't think Leone did that one, did he? Oh, I don't know. Anything with Once Upon a Time in the front of it, I'm going to have to think twice about anymore. So that movie, uh, Once Upon a Time in America, is uh, also Sergio Leone, but that was done in six in eighty four, um, mm. and it's about Jewish gangsters, and you know it's got Robert De Niro, James Wood, um, so it's an Italian American I still think adventure. I'm gonna skip. <laughs> yeah, I thought I feel like I've seen it once. I think um, let's see, who else is notable in that? Uh, Elizabeth. Wow, Elizabeth McGovern's in that. Wow, okay, interesting. Yeah, Joe Pesci. There you mm. go. All right. Um, anyway, 
we're not reviewing that movie, but I guess it has sort of, it seems like it has a reference and to that, or since it's also done by Sergio Leone much later. Um, I do yeah. find it interesting that in America, it mm -hmm. was given a rating of PG-13, but wow. every other country <laughs> has what an it, higher. It, what, uh, Once Upon a Time in the West or? Um... Once Upon a Time in the West. It says yeah. that, you know, notable things that they they would keep children from seeing is the man grabbing the woman's buttocks, the female yeah. main character being sexualized and brutally yeah. used. Mm hmm a woman to told to allow a man to grab her butt and then move yeah. the prostitution thing, the tearing of the clothes off of her, the, the sex scenes, the, the bathing scene when everyone's, you know, coming in and it oh, just, yeah. and that, that is what they felt was mild. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, Oh, not to mention I didn't think all that, of the alcohol, the understand. drugs, the smoking. It just it's not an appropriate movie for children, in my opinion. Yeah, well. All right. But I think we've done this movie to death. Yeah. Not Sorry, our favorite. Everyone. Not, not our not favorite. Anybody. We're seeing mm -hmm. we're seeing for completeness in the Sergio Leone 1960s film era. I will uh, agree to disagree with you on that one. Yeah, some good scenes here and there. Oh, um great. Hey, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So there you go. And some game recommendations. Amy wouldn't play in the game, but put no. it at a convention. Apparently, <laughs> I'd let everyone else play. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Amy. Well, you, thank you. Despite your negativity. Well, I just didn't like the movie, but yeah. I did apologize up front. That's true. All right. And then with that, with that, uh, well, I guess we'll end it here. Good night. Ooh. And good rolling.